Welcome back to The Price of Business. I am your host, Kevin Price, talking to you about you and your business. I hope you're having a great weekend planned out for you here on Friday. You know, we're going to get a chance to uh, enjoy some chill. Uh, but before you know it, it'll be Houston again. Houston weather always is right around the corner. All right, someone else always right around the corner, my good friend, Howard Kahn, he does a great job every time he brings guests here on the program. He's got an interesting law practice, and as a result of that practice, he gets to meet some interesting pre- people that we get to enjoy on this program. Howard, let's start real quickly with the 411 about your firm and then introduce our guest today. Uh, I'm a commercial real, commercial uh, litigator here in Houston, okay. and I have a national practice. We, uh, we do cases and transactions across the country for a niche business in the in the mar- in the collection marketplace. Okay, very good. What's your uh, website before we go to our guest? LoneStarLawyers.com. LoneStarLawyers.com. Introduce our guest, please. Yeah, today I have the honor of Mr. Richard Campo being our guest. He is the chairman and chief executive of- officer of Camden Property Trust, which is one of the nation's largest multifamily real estate investment trusts. All right. Good to have you on the program, Richard. Welcome. Well, thank you. And I was told that you, uh, you mentioned rather just before we got on, that you're an old radio guy yourself. I, I am. I am. I uh, hosted a, a late night radio show at Oregon State University while I was going to college. Back in the day. Back in the day. So um, radio is a lot of fun. When, when, did you, when was the last time you did a program? Ooh, uh, that would probably have been um, spring of 1976. Oh, my. Ouch. I, I really did date you there on that one, buddy. I apologize, man. So uh, I wouldn't have said a, a day over 82 or 83. There you go. So, well, Richard, uh, tell me about uh, your uh, story as far as uh, of, of being in Houston. Well, I, I, I probably am one of the, uh, the sort of uh, stories about Houston in, this, in the sense of it's being an incredibly entrepreneurial city. Uh, we started our company, uh, my partner, I, Keith Oden, started Camden in about 1982 as part of a real estate development company. So we had uh, pretty much n- uh, not a dime in our pocket and uh, came up with some great ideas about how multifamily would be a very uh, uh, great investment uh, uh, product for folks. And we went to some local Houstonians who helped us start our company and you know, we, we, we're having our uh, 20th anniversary as a public company this year. Uh, wow. So we started at zero in 1982, a uh, long time ago, obviously. Uh, but today we're, uh, we're 1,900 people and $9 billion of assets traded on New York Stock Exchange. That's just scary. That's fantastic. I love stories like that. Howard, you got a question for our guests? Sure. Um, uh, you asked me to call you Rick, sir. Is that right? Okay. Absolutely. Um, what are the primary drivers in apartment development and how does Camden meet that demand? Well, the the primary drivers uh, in apartment development are finding a good site and uh, finding uh, and being able to build a property uh, that that customers want. Uh, what's driving demand today uh, for apartments is uh, pretty simple stuff, which is uh, people want to live uh, in in sort of a uh, hassle free environment. Uh, the demographics are really good for our business, meaning that young people tend to be um, uh, to apartment uh, dwellers as opposed to homeowners. Uh, as you age, uh, the demographics move people into home ownership. So we provide. And then a, as they age some more, they get back into apartments. <laughs> they do. They do. Uh, the, yeah. the, uh, after, they don't want to deal with yards. They don't want to deal with all After any of about that. 55, they start, uh, the propensity to rent starts going up again. So yeah. it's sort of between 35 and 55 where people are buying houses. And then prior to that, they rent apartments. Uh, so de- developing apartments is uh, is a pretty simple business if you uh, you know get the right site and uh, and you know how to build the product uh, to the customer. So all of your REITs are dealing with uh, multifamily uh, residential. Well, REITs uh, in general deal with uh, with real estate, commercial, and then real, commercial estate, real estate, and, and we we focus on multifamily. Most REITs specialize, so you'll have office REITs, industrial REITs. And we happen to be a multifamily REIT. There are about uh, 11 other multifamily uh, REITs uh, out there that are traded on the New York Stock Exchange, but we prim- we focus primarily on rental. So yeah. we're not about building and selling. We're about creating long-term growing cash flow for our shareholders and, and providing living excellence for our customers. And in my own opinion, and I've talked about this on the radio, of the areas that you talked about in terms of REITs, yours is the one that I think has the most 
hope and promise for the future. I, I don't, I'm not very optimistic, uh, particularly about uh, offices, uh, you know, long-term wise. I think that's a very scary proposition uh, because of the move. In spite of Yahoo, you know, changing its position on virtual working, I believe virtual working is the future. I eventually expect government to force businesses to do that when they can. So I think you're probably in the sweetest of all those spots. Well, we think so. Um, if you go back to our history, we were in the office building business, and the challenge with the office building business is that when you think about the about the uh, uh, about pricing, uh, there is no price elasticity in 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 uh, office in the office market. When there's no demand, you can't give it away for free. Nope. In apartments, guess what? As you lower the price, you increase the demand for the product because people have to live somewhere. That's right. So it, that's one of the reasons that, or the biggest reason that we got into the apartment business in Houston in the 80s, because you couldn't lease office space at any price, but you could apartments. That's good. Howard? Yes. And um, now, you did kind of the opposite of what a lot of people believe was happening, but you were buying condominiums and then converting them into apartments. That's correct. In the 80s, we were doing that. And that is how you got started? Our, our base uh, was, was started in the uh, ashes of the 80s, if you want to call it that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Probably the worst real estate market in America was Houston, Texas uh, in the uh, mid-80s. And uh, there were a lot of high-rise um, condominiums that were built, very high-end properties, $250,000 to $500,000, all built inside the loop, and no buyers. Yeah. And so we uh, took over those properties, and we leased them, turned them into apartments, uh, just got the, the pricing right, and people would rent them, but they wouldn't buy them. And then as the rents went up and the markets improved, we converted them back into uh, condominiums. So we went from condo to apartment to condo. And today, some of those the condos are still there, and they're very successful uh, properties today. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And so that was probably a huge driver, you know, because people really didn't even have the ability to own. And so they just had to become apartments. Exactly. That's yeah. exactly what happened. In those days, interest rates went up to 20%. And so you couldn't get a mortgage, and people were worried about prices falling, sort of like they did in 2009 and 10. Yeah, yeah. And I think people can't get money, even though the rates are low, because I think those rates are so artificially low. Banks are like, who wants to loan money on, on what's going to eventually be worthless returns on that? I think that's one of the reasons why uh, loans aren't taking place. I think that's exactly right. Uh, you know, what happens generally when you have a, a big bust is the sort of pendulum of credit uh, credit. Uh, uh, tightness uh, moves way over uh, where it doesn't need to be, and that's what's sort of holding back the economy now. I, I think personally that that housing demand would be, for single-family housing demand, uh, would be increased dramatically if you increase the ability of, of loans. And I also think that that would add another million to two million jobs a year if you got housing back to where it needs to be. Howard? Yeah, now, you were telling me earlier that you think that the improving the single-family market is a good thing for improving the apartment market. There's no question about that. If you look back at the uh, what happened during the, the bust, we lost 8.5 million jobs. Th over 3 million of those jobs were construction workers related to and product developers related to single-family homes. We're building about 650,000 single-family homes annually. The demand, if you had better credit and just better confidence in, in consumers, is around a million to a million two. If you, if you went back to a million two of of home constructions, we would add at least another million and a half jobs. So instead of getting 150,000 jobs a month, you'd probably get 300,000 jobs a month, which would make the economy better uh, overall, and the apartment demand would go up as a result of that because we're, uh, we're demand is a function of household formation driven by job growth. Howard Kahn is our guest, and he, he's brought a guest. He's our contributor, rather. He's brought a guest, Rick Campo. Uh, Rick is with uh, Camden Living. By the way, you can learn more about Camden Living at camdenliving.com. That's C-A-M-D-N living.com. And we got about a minute left, Howard. Well, I want to let Rick give a, uh, a plug for his Super Bowl bid. Houston is going to be bidding for the Super Bowl for 2017. Rick, why don't you tell us about that? Yes, we had a press conference on, on Tuesday announcing uh, the, the team. Uh, uh, James Baker, Secretary Baker, is going to be our honor honorary chair, and he and I are going to go to the uh, owners' meeting in May uh, to uh, convince people that the Super Bowl should be here in 2017. I think we have a really great shot at it because Houston continues to grow. We had infrastructure. It's a great city, great weather during that time frame, and just a great sports city. Yeah, it is a great sports city. No question about it. Uh, 
Delighted to have you on. Good job, Rick. Thanks. I, I see you kept your, your radio skills. Thanks for being with us. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Well, Howard, always bringing great guests to us. Howard Kahn, of course, uh, Lone Star Lawyers. Give that website one more time before we let you go. LoneStarLawyers.com. Yeah, great guy. Uh, love having him as a part of our program. Thanks, for, thanks to both of you. Thank you, Kevin. When we come back, we're going to have much, much more for you. I do want to remind you, best content here shows up over there at usdailyreview.com. 